This is what is the count? Alok, uh, can you tell me how many students are attending this one? Hello? Ha, yeah. Hello? Yes, Alok. Oh, okay, okay. So I got this view. Okay, okay. So is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay. So good evening, students. Uh, today we will be dealing with the uh, online session for gate preparation, gate 2021. So today's topic of discussion is general aptitude. Okay. So we have divided this session. Okay in uh, four classes, right? So I will be conducting four minimum, but as uh, you request, if you request, then I'll continue for uh, more number of classes also as time permits, okay? So uh, today's topic of discussion is general aptitude, okay? So what is uh, aptitude? I I'll just quickly go through, you know, uh, the weightage of the aptitude, what is the syllabus, what are the books, okay? and some preliminaries regarding with the general aptitude as far as gate examination is concerned, right? So what is aptitude? An aptitude is a component of a competence, okay, to do a certain kind of work at a certain level, okay? Outstanding aptitude can be considered talent, right? An aptitude may be physical or mental. Aptitude is inborn potential to do certain kinds of work to, uh, whether developed or undeveloped so that is what is the definition you can get if you uh, search for the definition of aptitude in wikipedia right so what is gate aptitude so generally this aptitude section in the gate examination started in the year to, uh, 2010 okay 2010 so uh, the general aptitude section carries 15 marks in the gate examination and consists of 10 questions okay so in this section five question carry one mark and five question carries two marks each okay so the general aptitude section is common for all 22 subjects okay so this section is most uh, scoring section because we all are dealing we all are dealing with, uh, you know, uh, aptitude right from our school days and so on. So all the knowledge that we have to apply and this aptitude section, right? And should be well, uh, well prepared as it boosts up the percentile in the gate examination. That is quite obvious, right? So syllabus and structure. Okay. So as we have discussed in the gate examination, okay, uh, the number of questions asked in the uh, aptitude, general aptitude, would be 10 okay so there's 10 questions and five questions based upon the su subject if you are if you belongs to ece or computer science or mechanical engineering or some uh, other branches so 55 plus 10 the, the total questions are 65 okay so this aptitude general aptitude is divided into two parts right so the first one is verbal ability, another one is numerical ability, right? So in verbal ability, uh, what are the constituents of verbal ability? English grammar, sentence completion, okay. then uh, verbal analogies, then word books, instructions, uh, critical reasoning, and verbal deductions, okay? So, Numerical ability, you are having numerical competition, numerical estimation, numerical reasoning, right? And data interpretation. Okay. So the candidate must go through the exam pattern and making this uh, marking scheme of the gate 2021. Okay. So in this general attitude, as we have discussed, five questions for one mark and five questions for two marks. Total 15 marks. Okay. Types and CQ. Right. Then, this is the general uh, gate exam mode. It is a computer-based test. Okay, duration is three hours. Uh, you are having multiple choice questions and numerical type answer questions. Okay, total questions are 55. 55. Okay, so this is the general aptitude section. And this is with reference to math. Okay, plus your subject or specialization, right? 
and we are also having negative marking for mcqs only not for this nat uh, okay numerical answer type questions right okay so in this we are having the three sections general aptitude section mathematics section and uh, subject based section okay so types of question asked MCQ type. Okay, so one third. Uh, what is the negative marking scheme? Uh, scheme for wrong answers. One third marks will be deducted for one marks question, and two third marks will be deducted for two marks questions. Right? Okay, and correct for one and two depending upon that particular question. Okay. Now the interesting thing regarding with this one is how to prepare. For the GATE 2021 General Aptitude section, because uh, all the subjects you are dealing uh, right from your first year, second year, precisely second year and third year. Okay, but General Aptitude, this trend we are following right from our school days and so on. So you just have to rephrase the, you know, uh, the concepts. You have to revise the concepts so that you could be able to solve this because this is a very uh, important section in the gate examination you can score 15 out of 15 for general aptitude and that is obviously going to be uh, going to create an impact on your percentiles okay so general aptitude section can be very uh, scoring if you are preparing smartly right so the smart preparation is very very important over here okay so the section is divided into verbal and numerical ability okay so it carries again 15 marks okay five question for one marks five question for two marks okay so this section test your aptitude which cannot be gained overnight so this is a very very important thing already you are familiar with some of the things okay that you have to revise rehearse and you know uh, uh, practice it so that it could be possible to score in the general aptitude section, right? Okay. So you will have to practice for this section sincerely because sincere efforts are very, very important as you are dealing with this general aptitude section. Because this general aptitude is not only, uh, you know, uh, restricted for gate examination, but also you will be dealing with uh, the placement point of view or some other competitive exam point of view okay so this general aptitude plays a very important role basically it is a initial key to unlock further steps not only for gate but also for other competitive examinations okay so uh, today in the session we will be focusing this particular general aptitude as far as gate point of view right so since the practice is very very important over here Okay, so most students underestimate the general aptitude section that causes them to lose easy and crucial 15 marks. Okay, so don't uh, ignore this GA section. Okay, so this is very important, easy, and also crucial. Okay, so it is better to be prepared than being sorry. Okay, so you have to uh, prepare right from the beginning. Okay, so this is the good time to prepare. Okay, already uh, we have got only two months for the gate examination, but general aptitude you have been studying since uh, means uh, uh, you are attending your schools, right? So candidates can read uh, below the tips that must be followed during the preparation of this section. So I will be sharing you some of the tips, uh, sorry, some of the tips to prepare the general aptitude, right? Okay. So numer numerical ability. Okay, so verbal ability and numerical ability. There are two sections, right? So numerical ability is just a basic math. Okay, so if your hold on math is good, then you can easily score that particular section, right? Even if you are not good at math, you can still uh, ace it through. Okay, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of practice is required. Okay, so verbal ability test, uh, your uh, basically tests your hold. Uh, on the English language okay so some uh, synonyms antonyms or some incomplete sentences can be asked okay so it is basically up to you means in in what depth you are preparing uh, for English language and so on so it basically uh, goes with the maths as well as the English language okay so the section challenges your aptitude 
which cannot be gained overnight as we have discussed okay so a lot of practice is required for this particular thing okay so what could be the better approach uh, for going uh, so for preparing and gaining the confidence for general aptitude is a practice and practice more okay the similar type of questions like numerical ability and verbal ability and so on okay so you have to first first very first thing required to solve the general aptitude question is to understand the question first okay what has been asked you should not make a hurry okay while reading if you misinterpret the question then it would be uh, very difficult for you to score the easiest question right so understanding the question is very very essential okay so while solving the question visualize the problem first it will help you to reach the solution faster because 65 questions you have to attempt in 180 minutes okay so there are some questions which require a lot of steps lot of calculation you reserve the time for those questions okay if you read the question uh, correctly wisely then it will save the time to attend the questions which required a lot of calculations and so on okay sometimes the answer is pretty obvious okay but we are too engrossed in calculating that we tend to oversee it okay so that that is very important so understand the question is very very important understanding the question is very very important then the speed of calculation is another important factor so uh, you must have some practice right like we are having the vedic maths right and some other techniques to uh, solve um, uh, complex multiplications or divisions in a faster way so you should adopt such techniques while uh, calculating the things okay so at the end just practice as much as you can practice is the only mantra to crack any competitive examination okay in which this particular aptitude general aptitude is concerned right okay so uh, there are some of the books available in the market okay uh, for the preparation of general aptitude like uh, gate 2020 uh, guide for general aptitude by gk publication then uh, we are having gate uh, general aptitude and engineering and mathematics by pearson publication then objective english by hari mohan prasad and uh, a modern approach to verbal and non verbal reasoning by rs agrawal so don't worry i will be sharing some of the ebooks available with me okay as we complete all the lectures regarding with this general aptitude okay so today's topic of discussion is general aptitude okay and that too specifically we we will be do, uh, dealing with just a minute someone wants to admit okay and that too we will be dealing with the numerical computation numerical estimation numerical reasoning and data interpretation so all these factors are very very important when you are dealing with the numerical ability okay so for today's uh, section okay we will be dealing with uh, some of the examples regarding with uh, this numerical ability then again i will be focusing on uh, all the sections like uh, the numerical computation okay numerical estimation numerical reasoning and data interpretation in tomorrow's lecture and uh, the third and fourth session will be purely dedicated on the verbal ability because that requires a lot of you know uh, english grammar english uh, you know your command on english so that matters precisely so we will take some of the examples okay so that would be beneficial for you for preparing the gate 2021 20, examination okay so we will start with some of the examples okay uh, which are uh, which have been asked okay in the gate examination okay so uh, please be prepared with your pen and paper so that you you can solve the questions and tell me the answers right so uh, very first and easiest question i will be asking to you is i will write it down the question Hello? Is the screen visible? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, great. So, the very first example. No. 
to the base x of pi by 7 is equal to minus 1 by 3. Then, what is the value of x? Okay, so I will be giving the options a, b43 divided by 125, option b, 125 divided by 343, c, minus 25 divided by 49, and option d, minus 49 divided by 25. So, take two, three minutes for the calculation. And then we will discuss about the answers. Yes, what's the answer? You can also comment in the chat box. Okay, star is saying, second option, Dheeraj is saying, first option, what about others? Okay, so uh, let me uh, go to the answer first. Okay. So what has been asked is, log of this x, 5 by 7 is minus 1 by 3. So for this. Uh, solving this problem, you should know all the uh, details regarding the uh, logarithms, all the rules of logarithms. Okay, so this could be written as how should I write this one? How should I write this one? This 5 by 7 is nothing but x to the power minus 1 by 3. Am I right? Okay, so if I reverse. The numerator to denominator and denominator to the numerator, this minus sign will get disappeared. So 7 by 5 is equal to x raised to 1 by 3. Okay. So x is nothing but 7 by 5 x cube. Am I right? Okay. So x is equal to what is the cube of 7? Now here you should know what are the cubes and squares of some of the important numbers, at least uh, the cubes and squares from 1 to 20. Okay, squares and cubes. Okay, so the square of 7 is 49, the cube is 343 divided by 125. So, the first answer shows me, okay, this option, 343 divided by 125. Right? Agreed? Is it okay? Understood? Okay, so for solving this uh, such problems, you must know the rules of logarithms. Okay? Now, we will take one more a simple example. Okay? So, next is there are some operators. Okay. Operators like this rectangle, then this symbol, okay, and this. And they are defined by, okay, some expression. For example, E, the symbol B equal to A minus B upon A plus B. Okay, and A, this symbol will be 
equals to a sorry equals to a plus b upon a minus b and a arrow b equals to a multiplied by b. Now find the value find value of okay then six is six six you have to find the value of this one okay so compute it and tell me the answer You can also type your answer in the chat box. Okay, faster calculation and correct calculation is the key to success. Okay, in the data examination. So that can be achieved by means of practicing more. Okay. As you go on practicing, lots of solving a lot of problems, that it will save your time and you become perfect. Okay, for the calculation of the things in a more smart way, because ultimately you have to save the time. Okay, for difficult difficult questions, which basically requires a lot of computation and calculation and thinking also. Right. So this is very important. Yes, any answer? Okay, Ashwarya Chavan and Prashant Kadam are almost correct, but uh, see, uh, I have not given any option for this particular question. Okay, so you both are correct. Okay, so let us solve this problem for our audience. Okay. So what has been given? Okay, first we will do for sixty-six. Uh, this symbol six. That means six minus six upon sixty-six plus six. And sixty-six. So this symbol six is sixty-six plus six upon sixty-six minus six. Right? Okay. And ultimately we have to uh, apply this sign. For this operator and this operator. Okay, so let us first compute this one. This is sixty 
upon 72 okay which is 5 by 6 right this is 72 upon 60 which is 5 by 6 okay and what we have to do is 66 this symbol 6 okay this is regarding with the multiplication okay so multiplication 66 this symbol 6 okay so 5 by 6 multiplied by sorry sorry I went wrong here so this would be 6 by 5 okay so 6 by 5 this is 1 okay so simple answer is 1 right so these are very simple questions and such questions can be asked for one mark okay right okay so we will go for another question uh next is a cube okay a cube of side a cube of side 3 units is formed using the same smaller cubes of side 1 unit. Okay, so this particular cube is formed by means of a smaller cubes of side 1 unit. Okay, listen to the question carefully. A cube of side 3 units is formed using a set of smaller cubes of side 1 unit. Okay, so find the proportion of the number of faces of the smaller cubes visible to those which are not visible. Okay, I will repeat it again. You have to find the proportion of the number of faces okay, of the smaller cubes visible to those which are not visible. Okay, so uh, a cube is formed. Basically, this is a cube. And it is formed by means of three cubes. Okay, uh, this is three unit, and it is formed by, by means of smaller cubes of having size, size one unit. Okay, so what you are supposed to have is there are okay, so like this we can think of. Okay, so side is this side is. 3 units and each cube, okay, this cube is side, uh, side is having 1 unit. Okay, so what you have to find is, find the proportion of number of faces of the smaller cubes, okay, of the smaller cubes visible to those which are not visible. Okay, so that proportion you have to find out. Okay, number, how many number of faces visible and how many number of faces are not visible? So that proportion you have to find it out. So first, what you have to do is you have to think of there is how many number of faces this cube is having faces. How many faces this cube is having? Yes, you can comment in the chat box. Yes, correct, Prashant. Six faces we are having over here. Okay, now how many number of smaller cubes available per face? Okay, so nine uh, okay, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, nine. And how many faces are visible? Okay, so this upper one, so I'll just highlight this one, right? So this upper portion is visible, this portion is visible, and this portion is visible, right? Okay. So uh, what we have to do is now open the cubes. Okay. Cubes. 
so nine minus nine by ten. Okay. Now what we have to calculate is total number of faces. Total number of faces. How many faces are there? Six faces, right? So twenty-seven multiplied by six. It is one sixty-two, right? Now total number of non-visible faces. Okay. So total number of total number of non-visible faces. That we have to count. We have to take uh, the ratio of visible to non-visible. That proportion you have to find out. You will just take two minutes to calculate this. Then we will again get back to the answer. missing value okay so 6.4 then 7 4 1 1 9 Two, one, then four, one, two, then three. So this can be asked for two. Okay, so solve this question. You have to find out the missing question. It is very simple. 
though it look complex so you just have to find out what is the relation okay and then you could be able to compute for the answer Yes. If you take a lot of time, then uh, you know it should not be useful for you know for the basic examination and so on. Okay. So you have to think in a minute. Okay. You have to apply the logic, and then you could be able to compute this one. Have you found out the answer? It is very simple. Look here. So here, what is the relation here? If you see this uh, horizontally, these expressions horizontally, okay, instead of vertically, what is uh, the relation of six five four? Okay, they are in descending order. Okay, but that is not the case always. Okay, in each of the row, right? So if I add add this, it gives me ten. And what is the relationship between ten and uh, uh, this value? It is by two. Means what? If I add six plus four divided by two, okay. So if I take average of these two. Then I supposed to get the middle number, right? So in the same context, if I try, if I add these two numbers and these two numbers, okay. So let us add them. Seven plus four, okay, is eleven uh, plus two plus one is how uh, much? Three divided by two. Okay, so. This fourteen divided by two, I got seven. So seven is present over here. Now for this one, exclude these numbers. So if I add these two and these two, okay. So one plus nine, ten plus two, twelve plus one plus one, two plus two, four divided by two. So how much? Sixteen divided by two. It is eight. So eight is present over here. Again the same. Four plus one five plus this two plus three five divided by two. It is ten by two. That is five present over here. Now we apply the same thing for this one. So here we are having three plus three divided by two is three. So the answer for this is three. Okay. So this question is asked in the examination for two marks. Is it difficult? No, only the thing is that you have to think in that way, so that you could be able to get the answer properly. So, if you were thinking the question, if you are making the vertical and winding relation, then it would become complicated and time-consuming. Okay, so by looking at the problem, you have to think of the strategy. Okay, so which strategy you are supposed to apply over here? Okay, so coming to the next example. Okay, so I'll read out the question. Ram and Ramesh appeared for an interview. Okay, for two vacancies in the same department. Okay, so there are two persons, Ram and Ramesh. Okay, so these two fellows appearing for the interview. Okay, and they have been applied. They have applied for two vacancies. Two vacancies in the same department. Okay. So the probability of Ram selection is for Ram probability of selection is one sixth. Okay. Okay. And that of Ramesh is one eighth. Okay. Probability of selection. So I'll just write it down. Probability of selection. Okay, right. Now, 
what is the probability that only one of them will be selected? Okay. So either you have to select Ram or Ramesh. Okay. So what is that probability? Only one of them will get selected. Okay. So I'll read out the question so that you could be think of uh, the uh, solution. Ram and Ramesh appeared for an interview for two vacancies in the same department. The probability of Ram selection is one six, and that of Ramesh is one eight. What is the probability that only one of uh, only one of them will be selected? So take two minutes to think on the problem. Then we will move to the solution. Yes. Okay. So we will see the scene. Okay. So either Ram or Ramesh. Okay. Ram or Ramesh. Okay. So R is plus. Okay. So for Ram, the probability is one six, and the probability of not Ram. The probability of not run is how much? Sorry, probability of not Ramesh. Okay, sorry. Probability of not Ramesh is 5 by 7 by 8. Plus, probability of Ramesh is 1 8. And not Ram is how much? Five by six. Okay, so you get complete this one. So this is how much? Seven upon forty-eight plus five upon forty-eight. That is twelve upon forty-eight. Am I right? How much? One by four, right? So how we have formulated this one? Probability of okay uh, choosing only one. Okay, it is equals to probability. Into probability of not Ramesh. Right? Plus probability of Ramesh into probability of not Ram. Okay. So probability of Ram is into probability of not Ramesh. Probability of Ramesh is Okay, so 7 by 8. Or, we have said or. Either we have to select Ram or Ramesh. So, plus, right? Probability of Ramesh is given. 1 by 8 multiplied by. Not Ram. Ram probability has been given 1 by 6. So, okay. So, 5 by 6. Right? So, in this way, you can proceed. Okay. Is it clear? Is it clear? Okay. So one more problem. Okay. So an electric bus has onboard instruments that report the total electricity consumption. So we are having one. 
bus. Okay, on that we are having electricity consumption. Electricity consumption board. Okay, so uh, consume since the start of the trip as well as the total distance covered. So it will show since from start along with total. Okay. So during a single day, uh, single day of operation, the bus travels from station M and O and T. Okay. So the bus travels M and O and T. Okay. That in order. Okay. So the cumulative distances travel. Okay. And the corresponding electricity consumption is shown in the table. Okay. So we are having the switch, then cumulative distance covered in kilometers and electricity used in kilowatt. kilowatt hour. Okay, so we are having one table, right? So this M, this M, this O, and this P. Okay, so distance covered is 20 kilometers, 45 kilometers, and the electricity consumption in kilowatt hour is 12, 25, and 45, and 57. Then, the, so as to travel the bus from the start to the destination M, the distance is 20 kilometers, and uh, how much uh, electricity is consumed? 12 kilowatt hour. Like from start to point P, okay, and electricity consumption was 50 is minimum. What is calculating? You know the average. So, uh, how we can tackle this problem? Let's see. Okay. So for M stage, okay, uh, the distance travel is oh, sorry, the electricity use is twelve kilowatt hour, right? And the distance is 20. Okay. So what has been asked? Electric electricity consumption per kilometer. That's why consumption per kilometer. So first in numerator we have put the electricity consumption, and in denominator we have put the kilometer. Okay. So that proportion you have to find out, and which is minimum that you have to select for the option. Okay. So 12 kilowatt hour per 20 kilometers. Okay. So what is this ratio? It is 0.6 right so for n it is how much consumption is there 25 divided by 45 so uh, how much it is not like that okay so uh, this has to be subtracted i guess so just a minute we are not at all uh, considering this one so for m to n <laughs> So for M to N, okay. So already it has been traveled, okay. So uh, this 45, okay. Already we have traveled for 20 kilometers, right? So from M to N, the distance would be 45 minus 20, that is 25. All right. So in uh, N, the numer denominator is 25, and already it has consumed 12, right? So how much it is? 13, right? So 13 upon 25. It is, sorry. It is 0.52. Okay. Now, same is the case for O. For O, it has been already uh, traveled 45 km. Okay. So 75 minus 45. That is 30. 
Okay, so denominator 30 and it has already consumed 25. So minus 25, that is uh, how much? 20. Okay, so 20 divided by 30. That is, sorry, sorry. Okay. It is 0 0.66, right? So same is the case for P also. Okay, so it has already traveled 75 kilometers. So minus 75, it is 25, right? So in denominator, 25 kilometers and consumption minus 45. Okay, so this two and this one, only 12. Okay, so it is 0 0.48. So now we have to select appropriate amount. Okay. So which is minimum? Which is minimum for all of them? This P is minimum because uh, the electric electricity consumption per kilometer is minimum in the case of. P. So we are having 0.6 for first segment for M. 0.52. And 0.66 for O and 0.48 is for P. So less lesser value is this for P stretch. So you have to select the option for P stretch. Right? Okay. Understood. So just tell me. Uh, whether you are uh, getting the things or not. Screen is not visible. Yes. Please unmute and tell me what is the scenario. Screen is not visible. Screen is not visible. Just a minute. Okay. Something has been happened. Okay. So, uh, shall I repeat this? Shall I repeat the question? Shall I repeat the question? Yes, sir. Okay. So again, I'll take one more slide. So there is a scenario. Okay. So we are having one electric bus. Okay. So electric bus uh, travels to certain points. Okay. So it travels at point ten and four and three. Okay. There are distances and electricity consumption given in the table. Okay. So point M. M O P. Okay. And distance traveled in kilometers is given as, let me write it down. Here 20, 45, 75, and 100. Okay. And electricity consumption in kilowatt hour has been given 12, 25, 45, and 57. Okay. What you have to calculate is you have to calculate the uh, stop where the electricity consumption per kilometer is minimum. Okay, so that factor you have to calculate. Okay, so bus is starting from the start point. Okay, now from the start point, okay. What have been asked for case of M? What we are calculating? Electricity consumption per kilometer. So your denominator would be this kilometer thing, 20. Okay. And consumption is 12. So this is uh, how much? This is ultimately 0.6. Right? Now, if you calculate for N, already it has traveled 20 kilometers. So I will subtract 20 from this one. So I will be getting 25. So at the moment, it will be 25. And already it has traveled 13. So okay, electricity consumption per kilometer for N stops is how much 13 divided by 25, which is. 0.52. Okay. Then for the case of O, 
it has already traveled 45 kilometers right so i will simply subtract 45 from 75 so it gives me 30 so at denominator we are having 30 and it has already okay Okay, so same is the case for. Okay, so already it has traveled 75 kilometers. Okay, so I will subtract 20, uh, 75 from 125. So 12 upon this 25, it is 0. Okay, now you can see what is the minimum electricity consumption per kilometer. For case of M, it is 0. 0.6. For case of N, it is 0. 0.52. For O, it is 0. 0.66. And for P, it is 0. 0.48. So this is minimum, right? So, uh, so, so this parameter is minimum. Okay. So uh, at node or, or at HP, the electricity, electricity consumption per kilometer is minimum, right? So in this way, you can solve that problem, right? Have you understood that? So meanwhile, if you are facing any the voice is not clear, if the uh, PPT is or the explanation is not, if the screen is not visible, do ask me so that we could, uh, you know, rearrange the things in a proper. So shall we go for a two hour session or uh, one hour session is sufficient for today? Yes? Okay. Going with the next problem. So we will cover. Two more problems and we will start for this session. And two more again, we will go for another session. Okay. So next quiz is sorry. Okay. Okay. So circular sheet of paper. We are having circular sheet of paper. Okay. Having the radius r equals to 30 centimeters. Okay. Then a sector of a sector of ten percent area is removed. Okay, a sector of ten percent area is removed. Okay, so if the remaining part is used to make a conical surface. Okay, so if you exclude a circular sheet of paper of radius. 30 centimeters okay and some sector has been removed 10 percent sector has been removed and remaining paper we are used for you know uh, conical surface conical surface okay so then the ratio of the radius and height of the cone okay so Whatever may be your cone from the remaining part of the circle. Okay, so what has been asked is the ratio of radius and height of the cone has been asked. Okay. So circular sheet of paper we are having, and the radius of that particular circular sheet is 30 centimeters. And we have removed 10% area, a sector of 10% area, right? And we have uh, formed a cone uh, from remaining part. So you have been asked to calculate the radius, the ratio of radius to height of the cone. Okay. And the option is uh, not given here. So this is numerical question, which has been asked here. So you just have to find out the relationship of the or 
the ratio of the radius to height. And this question has been asked for uh, two months. So you can also comment your answer in the chat box. this what what this is quite a tricky question right but if you apply some some logic then it would be very convenient for you to calculate this one Yes. So, how do you calculate the area of the circle? Okay. After removing 10 uh, 10 percent from the uh, complete circle. Okay. So, area of circle is given as pi r square. Okay. So, if you are having pi into 30 into 30, so that gives me 900 pi. Okay. Centimeter square as area of this complete circle. Right. So if I multiply this with 0 0.9, okay, then 0 0.9 multiplied by pi multiplied by 900 centimeter square. So that is what is the area of the remaining thing. That's 10% of the area uh, we have excluded. Okay, so. This is nothing but we can equate this with the cross-sectional area of the cone. Okay, so pi r x, right? So this uh, pi r square, 0.9 pi r square, can be equated with pi r h. Okay, so I'll write it down. So this pi r square of 0.9 a area because 10 percent area has been excluded right and for two it is pi r x okay so this pi pi x cancel okay so this r is also same in this case right so no 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 sorry sorry the radii would be different over here so i'll just rub it i'll just rub it and this would be so this 0.9 into pi multiplied by 30 30 this is regarding the circular uh, portion excluding this particular sector of 10 percent 
right? Um, would be pi r1 multiplied by h is height. Okay, so that is same as the radius of this one. Okay, so here we are having 0.9, so this pi pi gets cancelled, this 30, 30 gets cancelled. Okay, so this 0.9 multiplied by 30 equals to r1, so this is 27 r1. So, one is regarding with that one is 27 centimeters, right? And how do I calculate the height of the cone? So, height, height of the cone is given as square root of 30 square minus 27 square. Okay, so this is how much? 900 minus this mine four then uh, okay so this is uh, one then seven then one and this answer would be thirteen point zero eight centimeters. So what has been passed is uh, what we have to do is we have to uh, find uh, the ratio of radius. Radius is twenty seven and height is thirteen point zero eight. Okay. So the ratio would be uh, the answer would be the ratio of these two. And whenever uh, you are dealing with the numerical ability uh, answers, you should be correct uh, up to two places after decimal point, right? And of one degree plus so what is the summation that you have to calculate? Okay, so I will give the answer. The answer to this one is zero. Tomorrow, you will be telling me how you have got the answer for this 